It is a place of constant change. Of wood and water. Sunlight and shade. This is Congaree National Park. Not far from South Carolina's state capital, this majestic wilderness of towering trees is a sanctuary. For wildlife, for champion trees, for visitors from around the world, Day by day, season by season, this floodplain forest changes, shaped and reshaped by water, a new place to explore each time you return. More than 26,000 acres, sheltering one of the last great bottomland hardwood forests of its kind in the United States. This wilderness inspires a sense of wonder. Generations of people have been drawn to this forest. The Barber sisters have been coming here their whole lives. We began as young children visiting our grandparents who lived a half mile from the river. Our dad would get on the canoe with my grandfather and they'd go to the great fishing holes. We've discovered that our uh, grandparents have been documented in this area as early as 1868. So this area just has so much history. Our, our roots are here and our cultural history. It is absolutely amazing to have this area as a national park. And we certainly feel very proud to be a part of the park and its activities. For many visitors, paddling is a great way to explore the park and venture into the wilderness. Around each corner, the trees frame a new scene, and there's always the possibility of an unexpected discovery. What creates this remarkable setting? It all comes back to the rivers, the Congaree and the watery. Water is the lifeblood that sculpts and nourishes the landscape. The water collects from rain that falls over a watershed larger than the state of Maryland, more than 14,000 square miles. When the banks of the Congaree and watery rivers overflow, water spills out the bottomlands nearby, making most of the park an active floodplain. This is a world defined by seasonal floods. Almost every winter, the rains fall, the water level slowly rises, and all through the forest, the guts and sloughs, the arteries of the park, fill up and start to spill over, spreading all across these lowlands, until the entire floodplain forest is one great slow-moving river. On this dynamic floodplain, water levels can rise and fall more than 10 feet. From season to season, the forest looks different. These floods revitalize the land 
depositing rich soils and nutrients that support a diversity of plants and animals. The waters also carry seeds and fish across the floodplain, dispersing new life. Rivers move. The waterways themselves are constantly changing and evolving, constantly shifting across the floodplain. The curves pulling outward and sometimes bending back around on themselves. Old river segments may be abandoned and transform into shallow lakes called oxbows. Over time, the course of the river itself shifts. Ancient river deposits north of the park bear evidence that the river has been moving for millions of years. The landscape you see today at Congaree reflects the river's movement since the last ice age. And so today, almost anywhere you walk in the park was once riverbed. And this rich riverbed has given life to an amazing old growth forest, a forest that has inspired people like John Seely to spend a lifetime exploring its many wonders. As a state biologist, I spent nearly 30 years studying this area and the wildlife here. And uh, I can say that Congaree is one of the most fascinating natural areas I've ever experienced. I think on a quiet morning, well, you can almost hear the trees grow. It's such a unique area that's different every time you come back to it. It changes by the season, it almost changes by the day. I don't care how often you come down here, there's always something different to see and experience. This is a forest of giants. Congaree National Park is recognized as having one of the largest concentrations of big trees in North America. Cypress and sweet gum and loblolly pines with national and state champion trees. And those are just the ones that have been surveyed so far. Park staff and researchers are constantly surveying, measuring and monitoring for new champions. The National Park Service and researchers like Will Blozan hope to find the next undiscovered champion tree at Congaree. There's no other place in the world that we know of that contains such incredible examples of loblolly pine. The initial surveys we do of the trees only give us two dimensions, and we want to know more. So we have to get up into the tops of these trees and spend a lot of time there and take detailed measurements so we can fully understand the biomass of these trees. And there's really interesting facts that help put the, into perspective the resources of this park. For example, we now know that loblolly pine is the largest species of pine in the eastern U.S. And that's a really important asset that this park has and is crucial in the interpretation of and the protection of its resources. The results of the climb of this tree indicates that it is currently the tallest living representative of its species at 169 and a half feet tall. I think the most exciting thing is getting above the surrounding canopy level. And up in the top, the tree is gently rocking and the sound of the pine needles is just fantastic. And all the other trees swaying in unison, almost like a field of wheat. It's just really amazing to see that from that perspective. Beneath these giants of the forest, many other plants have adapted to life here from ferns to mosses to beautiful wildflowers. In these lowlands, even less than one foot of change in elevation creates a new habitat with different plant and animal life. A champion-sized log on the forest floor becomes a nutrient source for new life.
immense cypress and tupelo trees grow in old oxbow lakes that have filled in. Cypress tree roots push up through the soil to form knobby structures called knees. Their exact function is still a mystery, but scientists believe they may help to stabilize the trees. Old river ridges and creek banks support hardwood communities of oak, sweet gum, and loblolly pines. Along the bluffs bordering the floodplain, there are remnant forests of longleaf pines that once blanketed much of the southeast. These varied habitats are home to an amazing variety of animals as well, and the park has been internationally recognized for its biodiversity. It's no wonder this living laboratory is a destination for scientific researchers like wildlife biologist Laurel Barnhill. Congaree National Park represents a large expanse of protected bottomland hardwood, and this is important for a, a large number of bird species. That's why we see such, such a diversity and difference in the number of species that are here. Bird monitoring is critically important because we can identify what is happening with their population. Congaree National Park has a huge number of bird species that reside here, migrate through here, and winter here because of the diversity of habitats that are available and have been protected here. For centuries, this floodplain has also attracted people. Our relationship with the landscape is just as dynamic as the ecosystem itself, constantly evolving over time. From Native Americans to Spanish explorers, soldiers during the American Revolution, escaped slaves who may have lived in communities here amongst the trees local residents who were baptized in Cedar Creek, and loggers who were hired to harvest these giant trees. Floodplain forests provided valuable timber for a growing country. The rich soil was also ideal for farming. As a result, most of the South's old growth forests, like Congaree, fell to the ax and the plow. Once, these bottomland forests stretched from Virginia to Texas. In the late 1800s, there were more than 30 million acres of old growth floodplain forests across the southeastern United States. In less than five decades, most of the great old growth forests were devastated. It was the actions of many that allowed the survival of this forest. By the early 1900s, most of the bottomlands that now comprise the park were owned by timber tycoon Francis Beidler. While some parts of the Beidler tract were selectively logged, the work was difficult. Extreme heat, humidity, flooding, and health of the work crews limited the timber harvest. Yet, Beidler retained the land in anticipation of a time when there might be no more old growth forests. By the 1950s, Congaree was arguably the last, largest, and best preserved tract of old growth floodplain forest remaining in the country. Local writer, outdoorsman, and conservationist Harry Hampton passionately advocated for its protection. In the 1970s, a new generation of conservationists began advocating for federal protection of the forest. 
Just as other people across the country fought for the Redwoods and the North Cascades and the Everglades and made them parks for all the people, I think it's the duty of the people of South Carolina to make the gift to the rest of the nation of their finest place too, which is Congaree. There's no place else like it on this nation and probably on this earth. Through a successful grassroots campaign, these efforts led to the establishment of Congaree Swamp National Monument in 1976. And by the 1980s, much of the park was designated a federal wilderness area. Then in 2003, the monument's boundary was expanded and its designation changed to Congaree National Park. As a national park and federal wilderness area, Congaree is protected for current and future generations to enjoy and explore. The work to understand share and care for this landscape continues. Environmental changes, including upstream land use, climate change, loss of biodiversity, and water quality, all challenge the future of the floodplain and its watershed. And so, protecting Congaree National Park isn't over. It's a continuing mission that falls to each of us. You are now part of the Congaree story. Create your own chapter. Over 26,000 acres. Home for a remarkable diversity of life. Day by day, season by season, this floodplain forest is in motion. Always different, always new, a place of constant change. <laughs>